reward schemes, what are their purposes? Cynical market employees to raise sponsorship, just a distraction from getting on with the real work, or true recognition of absolute brilliance? This month, I'm mulling on award schemes, especially as our disability community seem to be smashing it out of the park. This couldn't be more timely as I start to get ready for the Business Book of the Year Awards at Wembley. It's the author's answer to the Oscars and I am so excited. That said, it feels as if there are so many award schemes and recognition lists in the diversity, equity and inclusion space. The question is, do they really mark success? How is that tested? And what do people with disabilities really think of them? We like it when award schemes notice the disability ERG leaders. We are invested in that because we're the only organisation that delivers networkology know-how to 3,000 leaders, either directly or through the bursaries that we deliver. And we love it when they're recognised for the work that they're doing. Take the recent British Diversity Awards. AMS picked up the Outstanding Disability Network of the Year Award and the work of Atos Adapt Network was also heralded as exceptional. And last year, the New South Wales Department of Communities and Justice's DEN won the Disability Employee Network of the Year Award organised by the Australian Network on Disability. Even the Shore Trust Power 100 list are now recognising disability ERG leaders. Claire Gray tells us that in 2021 and 2022, we saw an uplift in the number of disability ERG leaders being nominated for and recognised in the Power 100 list. It is great to see this nod of recognition to disability ERG leaders in the general upsurge of awards and recognition schemes, especially as they are the primary vehicle by which we can drive cultural change. So why is it important to reward the effort, the impact and the pace of change that is being led by the disability ERG community? Firstly, they want their organisation to prioritise action according to their own employees' views, often best done via an ERG, what we call learning directly from disabled people. Secondly, they want their senior leaders to notice the extraordinary skill it takes to tackle the human resistors to disability. Thirdly, ERGs do most of the heavy lifting when it comes to normalising or usualising disability in the workplace. Love that word, usualising. Thanks, Diane. So if your ERG is entering for an award and you are the executive sponsor, support them to think deeply about the impact and the evidence that they need in order to put themselves forward. Ask them three things. One, what is the direct impact your work has made and are we supporting you enough? Two, what would the organisation need to be doing if the Disability ERG was not doing this for us? Three, where are the micro stories of how people's confidence has soared as a direct consequence of the Disability ERG? When an organisation is considering award schemes, it's important to decide if it's a good fit. Take this story I heard recently. A senior disability champion at her DEI board was asked to sign off an agreement as to whether the organisation should enter into a particular award scheme. The team clearly thought that they deserved the award, but she wanted to clarify three things. When was the last time we actually put together a comprehensive survey to our employees about what they really think about our progress. Are we proud to be sharing our progress as beacons of best practice? Have we spent sponsorship money with this awarding body and could this have created bias in the award distribution? The room went quiet. Awkward. Let me know in the comments box your views about award schemes, the best, the worst, the most complicated. And if you've been clever enough to win an award, tell us about how it made you feel and what you did as a consequence. And for those disability ERG leaders who have not yet won an award, keep going. Keep going with your obstinacy and keep being your brilliant self. And of course, tap us up if you want some coaching. 
Next month, I will be announcing new plans for the Purple Light Up, the movement that culminates on the 3rd of December. It's going to have a new name, refreshed purpose, and specific advice to employers about how and why to take part. I am so excited. And finally, don't forget to listen out to the noise coming from Wembley on the 16th of May at the Business Book Awards. It could be Ed Sheeran warming up for his concert, but you never know.